Hey guys, cool little thing we're doing right here. Jade and I had such a fun time doing our discussion about Supernatural in general uh, back in the summer of this year. We decided to do a review of the first episode of Supernatural Season 15. So I'm really happy, Jay, that you were able to do this with me because it was such a fun time doing it, uh, the, the conversation, the debate with you last time. So I was really happy that we could do a review of the first episode here. Well, thank you for inviting me to do it again. I appreciate it. And also, I'm really excited to talk about it because I watched your video <laughs> and I think you watched my video. Yep. I think we got some conflicting points. Yeah, so. no, there's, there's, there's a few. Uh, there's definitely going to be an interesting back and forth. I guess we'll start off with the very beginning, which something that I actually thought was pretty good, but I didn't mention in my review, but you did in yours, was the recap. Mm -hmm. um, that transition to the actual episode, that was, in my opinion, the smoothest thing they did in terms of the production <laughs> throughout this whole episode. But I thought that was actually pretty well done, just actually transitioning into them fighting i, I thought that yeah. was a pretty good edit i think uh obviously it's pretty subjective how you would look at it but i loved everything about the recap they used like a really good song i think was famous final scene by bob Seger, which yep. i think worked perfectly with the transition from the recap into the actual episode and them fighting the zombies and all that stuff and, like, also the Road So Far thing had the Impala behind it, which matched the color scheme mm -hmm. with the new title card. And then just everything about it was, like, perfect. <laughs> For me, at least. I was fangirling this entire episode, so I will say that my opinion, are, it, my opinion is definitely biased here when it comes to that. But I just, I think the recap was well done. It did a good job at highlighting the important parts of season 14. Like, we only had to see Nick on screen twice, and one of those was when he was dying. So, oh, like, I'm cool with it, yeah. you know? <laughs> My dad actually had to ask, what was that part? And I was like, yeah, that's a part that thankfully didn't go the way that a lot of people thought it was, and I was kind of happy about that. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. I'm so glad that Lucifer I, I use that back. line of yours, actually. The herpes of Supernatural, <laughs> I've used that in conversation before. That. I love that. <laughs> no, it's a good, it was a good point. So going from the recap to the actual episode itself, I know you had a much like more positive opinion of it than I did. Mm -hmm. I I liked there were some parts of it that I thought were okay, but some of it just felt like the most rushed dinner of all time. There was some parts that were now I'm not just talking about camera wise, but just production wise, just writing and everything. It just seemed really really sloppy in some parts really re subjective really on the point like absolutely going for a stretch which is one of the parts we'll talk about later um it wasn't a horrible episode but it had a lot of issues with it to the point where i am kind of concerned that this season is going to be as mitigatingly horrible as i feel season 14 will be i hope it isn't but that's kind of my thoughts. I know you have a you have a bit of a different opinion of it. Like, what were your thoughts of the episode, kind of like in a short part? Uh, well, I think firstly, it's kind of hard to tell exactly where the season's gonna go just based off of the first forty five minutes of it. You know, in terms of like the way that they styled the episode, there were things I liked, and then there was also things I questioned, like. <laughs> Uh, the camera angles, there was like this one scene, it was when Belfagar and Dean were talking, when they had that low camera angle. Do you, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but there was were, that huge amount of headspace to the I left. I know! And that was were, bothering the living crap out of me. It was waiting for him literally just to hold up his hand. I was like, alright, you could have done a different cut for that part. <laughs> yeah. But there was other parts too, like the, for instance, the conversation in the car and they were using the mirror for Jack. That was good. I mm -hmm. like that camera angle, but then there were some that were just like that running, the ghosts chasing after Sam and Castiel in the street oh just God. looked fucking horrible. It looked, I... like, it looked like a really <laughs> bad student film. I think the Bloody Mary looked like more like the chick from the ring, honestly. Oh, yeah, well, when she came out of the wall, I thought that was cool because I kind of thought like, all right, was that actually there or did they dig a hole in that person's yard? And I kind of was wondering how they shot that, like how they did it. Um, mm -hmm. It was it was admittedly that part like how she came out of the water was cool but yeah this is like ooh like all the money for costume design clearly went to the clown mm -hmm. and then the other yeah. ones got scraps <laughs> yeah I, the, the clown looked cool everybody else kind of the ghost like 
I think the zombies in the apocalypse, not the apocalypse, I think the zombies in the graveyard looked pretty well done. Just, oh yeah, definitely all them But too. the ghosts, just, it was only John Wayne Gacy they cared about. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's, I guess, kind of going back to the factor of the show, right? They, they, they haven't explained that. Like, I, they said all, it made it kind of look like, at least in the end of season 14, they made it that God had made all the things that they had killed come back even though some of it didn't make any sense because some were ghosts that were completely obliterated from existence. Like, they didn't go to purgatory, they didn't go to hell, they just disappeared. Um, and so, like, when the woman in white was there, I was like, how the fuck are you there? <laughs> like, the ghost made sense because someone pointed out, or sorry, the clown made sense because someone pointed out that that's a monster, which I forgot. I mean, it's, admittedly, it's been a while since I've seen the, first, the second season. Mm -hmm. But that's something that that is one of the reasons why i'm kind of a bit hesitant about this season is because dab is already doing a few writing laziness and that's what's going to lead me into my next part which is that absolutely ridiculous conclusion those brothers come up to by just seeing a car on the side of the road and like hey that's a woman in white Mm -hmm. The only thing that I think would actually lead Sam and Dean to thinking it's a woman in white would be the fact that there's no body in the car because in the lore, women in white are known for kidnapping men oh, uh, off yeah. of roads and rivers. I'm... But how often do you come across a car and you're just like, boom, it's a woman in white? Well, like, yeah, like not, <laughs> not, no, like, it was so fast. Like they didn't need to have them explain it there. All they would have had to have done is... Sam could have seen the, the thing later and be like, hey, that's the woman in white. It's not the same actress, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's the woman in white. You remember her? But they get it from a car on the side of the road. They've seen tons of cars on the side of the road with blood in it. No, yeah, exactly. That's That was the one thing I noticed. I mean, when I'm watching the episode, I'm mostly just crying over Sam and Dean, not going to lie. But... <laughs> That kind of made me think that they didn't want to spend too much time on having Sam and Dean actually figure out that the ghosts that they put or, like, killed were back. So, I mean, yeah, I agree with you on that. I think that they should have spent more time either figuring out that the ghosts were back or, like you said, just have Sam and Dean be like, Hey, it's the woman in white and not from, like, a car, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's... It just felt like it was rushed. There was a lot of stuff that was rushed in it. Uh, there was some odd choices with the budget. Like for instance, what was it? Um, I know for a fact that they definitely spent a lot of money shutting down Ladner, like the town and that residential area. That mm -hmm. would have cost money to do that. And on a show that, like with Supernatural's budget, I imagine most of the episode's budget went to shutting down Ladner and... Yeah. Uh, and, the, and they only probably could have done that during the day. There's no way they would have, like, in the residential area, there's no way they could have done that at night. Because um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of old people who live in Ladner, and they wouldn't have signed off on that. <laughs> um, but, uh, I don't know. I Like I said, I don't think it's a horrible episode. I just think that there's a lot of things that don't bode well for me. In your video, you had some pretty, you have some high hopes in how this yeah. season is going. You, you had a positive outlook on this episode. So, mm -hmm. like, what were the things that you enjoyed about this episode and gives you that uh, idea of, you know, positive outlook on the season, as aside from my skeptical uh, outlook? All right. So, I mean, firstly, I liked a lot about this episode. I liked how Jack was possessed. I liked how... Yep, that was good. I'll you know, agree that, with you there. Yeah, <laughs> that was really good. I liked that. I am obviously really biased when it comes to Supernatural, so I just, I loved the, sh the sh episode in general just because I liked, you know, having the show back. I think that while this episode was good on my standards, we don't... We didn't really get a whole lot of information about what Sam and Dean are really going to be facing this season, especially with the issues with God, because yeah. that was like the main problem at the end of season 14 was, hey, God is kind of screwing everything up, you know? Um, but I think that the issues with Hell are probably going to be resolved sooner than we think, because uh, I don't know if you saw there were promo pictures released for the third episode, and it shows Sam, Dean, Cass, uh, Belfagar, and Rowena in the same cemetery where everything had happened, and it kind of looks like they're doing a spell. So I'm gonna assume that that's like the episode where they're trying to 
fix that stuff, uh, but well, I don't know well, how that's gonna that, go. That is a uh, that is a trait of Dab. He does tend to start storylines and then drops them really yeah. really quickly, or resolves them with absolutely astounding flair. Mm -hmm. So that I'll admit, there will be a sense of unpredictability, not in the good sense, but there will be that in this sh in this season for sure. I also think that because the showrunners love spoiling the show uh, before the episodes come out, we already know that Chuck isn't done messing with Sam and Dean and, you know, ending the world and all that stuff. So I think having that come in a little bit later will help progress the story forward a little bit so we're not spending so much time with Sam and Dean wondering what the hell they're going to do more and have more of them focusing on, hey, what are we actually going to do? And doing that stuff, that just probably did not make sense. But yeah. um, <laughs> no, 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 I get, I get what you mean. Like they're trying, yeah. to, they're trying to give some tension to it. But mm -hmm. well, we saw how many different storylines in the last season there was, but yeah, five, six, too many. I yeah. agree with you there. Like I, I did like season fourteen, uh, but. Yeah, they dropped the Michael storyline and then they dropped the Lucifer storyline. There was a thing in the ground, like Kentucky was... Fried Chicken. Or was that season 13? Oh, uh, that was season 13, yeah. Like, obviously, we, we can agree on that, that whatever is possessing Jack gave that character a very nice breath breath of fresh air in terms mm -hmm. of something new to yeah. him. Like I think that's the most I've enjoyed Jack in his entire run of his character. I was like, wow, he actually has a personality. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think it is really refreshing to see Alex play another character that is pretty different from how Jack is. I think it really gives us a chance to see his skills as, as an actor besides what he can portray as Jack. And in the show, it also shows us how Sam and Dean and Cass work with someone possessing their dead adopted child. But yeah. I, I think it's pretty compelling. I just don't think Belfagar, the demon who's possessing him, is going to be around for too long. I have a few reasons, too. So. <laughs> well, yeah, there's some people who are thinking it's either Adam or it's Crowley or... I don't know. I, I'm definitely... I don't think Mark Shepard's going to come back. I think he got burnt in a really bad way by Andrew Dabb. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't I'm... think he's coming back. Fucking the way that Crowley died, I will never be over that. Oh, he's pissed. So. Remember, he like I, I saw there was a video of him talking about how they actually had a uh, a can like a kind of a campaign with a shirt and everything. Mm -hmm. It was the last line he was supposed to say before he killed himself. Yeah. Uh, what well, wasn't it something about uh, I do it my way? Oh, in the end, I win. In the end, I always win, or something like that. Yeah. And he was supposed to say that, but they cut it. Mm -hmm. And that. When I heard about that, I wanted to like punch myself in the face. I was so mad because that would have been perfect. You yeah, know? it made like, it would have made some sense to that completely random, stupid death. <laughs> the season twelve, I've always counted that as like the season finale. Anyways, has been the tipping point of when this show just took a nosedive into Poopyville. Like, <laughs> just in my in my opinion. Yeah. And then uh, coming to the end of the episode, that last shot, the one where it, I I called it right when I saw. Sam, when Dean, oh, I first, knew it, yeah. when Dean first opened up the trunk, is like, I know how this episode's going to end. I was like, and, they're going to do it. <laughs> and I, I, I've gone back and forth between liking it and thinking it's incredibly pandering to the whole fan service idea. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm a bit hesitant, is I have a feeling that this is going to be a massive fan service machine. Andrew Dabb's already been a, quite obvious that he will do fan service over storytelling any day of the week and mm -hmm. we didn't real. I, I felt really you didn't need to show the first episode ending you didn't need to we would have gotten that but that edit I understand why it was there mm -hmm. but I think that's what he's doing like if say a show like can you think of an any other show that has gone on as long well not obviously not none have gone on this long um Mind you, Grey's Anatomy might do this. I heard Grey's Anatomy is like on their 15th season as well, and they might be coming to an end soon. But in terms of shows that have come to an end, they don't spend the entirety of their run reminiscing about the past mm -hmm. and like being fan servicey. They are coming to the end of their story. So that's kind of where I'm coming from is, do you feel this will actually be a story full episode or is this going to be more of a fan service pandering episode? Or sorry, season. 
Well, first of all, I just want to say I did like the little part at the end. I think I screamed a little bit when I saw it because I, I knew it was going to happen, but I, it made me excited. But um, I, while I don't agree with the whole like fan service stuff, like I agree with you saying that Andrew Dabb has taken fan service to a point where sometimes it does affect the storyline. I think being able to bring Supernatural back to its roots of just like Sam and Dean against the odds of everything uh, kind of makes us feel like it's similar to season one, if, the, if that makes sense. Like, I know a lot of people said that they think season one is like the best season of Supernatural, and while I disagree with that, I like the idea of season 15 having some of those callbacks and the elements that it, the earlier seasons had. Um, and while I am a giant fan of the show, and I would love to see, you know, all these characters come back, if they do come back, I want them to come back in a way that serves the plot purpose. For example, Adam is going to be back this season, and I think bringing him back is a huge fan service, but there is a lot of potential in his storyline that wasn't dove into, and I'm really excited to see him back because how long it's been, but also for the reason that well, if they what, have any what potential. Is, if I can add, what is what, yeah. what do you what what do you mean by that? What's your reason as to what do you think it would be interesting for him to come back? For Adam? Yeah. I think it would be interesting for him to come back because Adam was a character that we didn't really get a lot of. Uh, well, no, Not, technically we never met him while he was alive. Yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah, shit. Now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah, because was, there was not the shapeshifters, but what were they? The ghouls. Ghouls, yes. Mm -hmm. I think they had killed him, and then he had came back as a ghoul, and no, then no, killed no, him I, again. I, was it? I don't I just remember, yeah, it wasn't actually him. He was dead. And then yeah. I just remember them absolutely carving up Sam and kind of wondering. Yeah. Like, hey, he, he got off of pretty... He got away from that pretty go okay. Like I, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he's got some really deep lacerations there. Yeah, it's, I mean it's supernatural. They they never scar anyway. <laughs> oh yeah. But um, I think the idea of Sam and Dean having like some long lost brother, I think in season five the idea was good. But also, I kind of was in the middle about it because I was like. Why are they bringing in some random person that we've never met before? That's like saying that they're now related to Sam and Dean and they're, they now have something to do with the apocalypse. It was a little confusing, but now I think the fact that Adam is in the cage because of Sam and Dean, I think that he's going to probably hold a grudge against oh, Sam and Dean. Oh, and yeah, he would. Yeah, so that's what I'm hoping for because... In my mind right now, I'm thinking if Adam comes back, Michael's going to come back too, right? But I'm thinking Michael's going to be more pissed off at God than anything. Oh, I'm just really hoping that they, we do not go down. Like, because that Michael storyline in the last season was already fucking horrible. Yeah. It was a terrible storyline. <laughs> so I'm hoping... That's kind of my fear is... I, Adam coming back is interesting, but the idea of another Michael coming back again... Well, the thought that I had was, I mean, I obviously they can't have Michael back as like a villain because they that would it. be just like another plot dropped, you know, like they did la uh, last season. I think if Michael was working with Sam and Dean, which is like a stretch of me to say, but it makes a little bit of sense because like I said, Michael and Adam have been in the cage for God knows how long. If I think anyone's going to be pissed off it's going to be michael and adam and michael's going to be pissed off at god and he's you know mm -hmm. i just kind of like rambled for a little bit but i no. guess my point is i think michael would be more willing to work with sam and dean against god if it means that you know because yeah yeah <laughs> i'd kind of be interested if he came back and he's a bumbling mess like what, that too <laughs> what what gabriel who shouldn't have been brought back at all was how he was like a mute and he was like shell like he was traumatized and everything that's mm -hmm. technically that's how adam and michael should be when they come out of that no yeah exactly but um, knowing the way that supernatural has been i, I don't think they're gonna do that okay. just because i if they i mean sam was okay after the cage but he was soulless so i'm we don't really know that much about the cage besides well, the, what we they know. They also from, had like, the uh, Sam they had the, and, the like, shield, Lucifer. right? The death put that shield in his head, and 
Yes, yeah, uh, Death had put a wall in Sam's head, but Sam yeah. ends up breaking the wall at yeah, the he end did. of season uh, seven. I mean, a part of me wants to rewatch season six just to see soulless Sam again. Because there was a few things he did that were quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, funny enough, Jared Padalecki trying not to rally em, really emote in acting made his act his, like his role that much more entertaining. I love Jared Padalecki. <laughs> no, yeah, I... I know that everyone shits on season six and seven, but I, I did like season six. Six, I've, I, that, I, yeah. I, I think that six had the impossibility of coming back from the re- the realistic yeah. ending of the show. Seven's not very good, but now after the recent seasons, I'm really re- willing to watch re- rewatch season seven again and think, okay, maybe it wasn't that bad. I think the only episode I absolutely despised is in season seven, and it's season seven, Time for a Wedding, when, yeah. like, Becky... And speaking of, Becky's gonna be back, too, this season, which... That's a lot what, of fan service. Like, what? <laughs> that is... Okay, I'm okay with literally every single name that I've heard come back up for characters that are gonna be back, except for Becky. <laughs> yeah, that's just so... That's so insane of how long... I don't know. But again, Supernatural is an oddity itself. The only other show that's run as long as this show has is is literally the one I mentioned earlier, which is Grey's Anatomy. So, yeah. And I only know about that show because my roommate watches it often, and sometimes I get pulled into that. It's tripe, but it's dramatic tripe. <laughs> See, that's why I just only watch Supernatural, so, like, I don't get to experience anything else except that, so. All right, cool. <laughs> um, so, I guess coming up to the end here, so... You saw, obviously, my reaction, and I saw yours. Um, something that's been interesting, though, at least in the comment section for my review so far, I'm used to getting a lot of people both agreeing and disagreeing with me, mm-hmm. and, which is fine. You know, that's totally, And I like that you and I can have this conversation. We can have our disagreements. We can have our counters. And we're not yelling at each other. Yeah. Right? right? Um, yeah. I, I always appreciate that. Um, but I've noticed that only one person... I've so far in my reviews, maybe there might be another one by now, um, but only one person kind of be like, you know what, no, you're just kind of being a pessimist, which I was like, no, it's, it's called critiquing, mm-hmm. but um, that's the only one. Everyone else so far is agreeing with me, and it's kind of, I'm not used to this much, peop- these many people agreeing with me, so what is that like do you think that maybe some people are starting to un- to see, at least from the point of view that I've had, that maybe supernatural has been kind of running a bit of a ridiculous trend here and there are some people who are legitimately fearful that this season might suck well i mean i've seen a lot of positive reactions to season 15 so far um at least from my end but to be fair on my end i'm making videos that are more positive towards supernatural you know and not saying that yours are negative, but you critique them a lot more than I do. Oh, yeah. So it's different I, audiences, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, a lot of the things that you present are very, you know, valid, and I understand where you're coming from a lot when it comes to some of the critiques you have on the show. But, like, at least from my point, I can understand where other people would agree with you, too, you know? Well, so, I, I, you know, peop, as long as you have like a good point to what you're saying, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's always that's something that I feel that the world has kind of forgotten is that we used we need critiques to be better for ourselves. Yeah. And like some people, like some people have pointed out me being wrong about a few things, mm-hmm. and I'll be like, yeah, okay, I was wrong about that. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Oh, did we talk about the equalizer? Oh, I, I don't be think putting we it did. in, putting it in the glove compartment. I. <laughs> I thought, okay, I just thought about that because I wrote something down about um, Sam's wound uh, when Cass was trying to heal him because you had said something about uh, how Dean had, like, put the rubbing alcohol on Oh, yeah, he's just like, here you go, bud. You just got this bullet, and here's here's some rubbing alcohol. That'll make it all better. Oh, yeah, but I actually, (laughs) I wrote a counter to that because uh, Cass tried healing it. Yeah, that's and true. it didn't work. And then also, the gun doesn't use bullets, like God said in season fourteen. So I don't really think Dean can like go digging in a wound that doesn't no, have a bullet in it. No, that's true. That yeah, no, yeah. you're right. Actually, yeah, you're <laughs> true. It's uh, 
It's using energy or some business and whatnot. Yeah, it uses the energy of the universes or some shit like that. I don't know. Yeah. God McGuff was, like, McGuffin on Gun. made that. <laughs> so then doing my review things, I gave it a 3 out of 7. So I'd like to, if you would entertain me here, what <laughs> out of 7, out of my weird 7 thing, what would you have given this episode if you were to rate it on a 7? I would give it a 6.5 out of 7 because Ooh. I really liked the episode and I would probably rate every single episode a 7 except for that one episode in season 7, but yeah. <laughs> oh no, no, it's good to have a fan, it's a, I'll admit, while I have been pessimist, uh, oh, I said it, while I have been uh, a very critical of the show in the last little while, admittedly leading up to the fina like to the beginning of this season, I'll have to admit that I was going through a bit of the motions on the drive to from work to home uh, that Thursday night and I was thinking to myself this is actually finally coming to an end the thing that I've been mm -hmm. talking about and wanting for so long is actually happening and I'm having a small tiny molecule of regret that it's actually happening now because this has been a part of my life since I was in high school this has been for f the last 15 years so I'm definitely feeling that feeling that other people are. Definitely not to the extent that some are. Because some people oh, are like, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to live without Supernatural. That's basically me. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, I'll, I'll move, I'll, I'll be able to move on. But admittedly, it's, it's, it is absolutely crazy that this is actually finally happening. From a person who's been watching yeah. this since I was, I was 15 years old. It must be insane, so I kind of want to ask you, like, how you must be feeling. You must be feeling, uh, going through a bit of a, a wave of your emotions yourself. More like an identity crisis. I don't know, man. It's, it's, <laughs> when I first found out the show ended, I was at work, and I started bawling, because I didn't know how to handle that. And then I made a 30-minute video of me crying Aww. about it, and then I unlisted that video, because I was embarrassed about it. But, uh, <laughs> my take on it is, I... Personally, I am excited to see where Jared Jensen and Misha go after the show, how they, what they do with further their, their acting careers. But also, I, yeah, I'm sad that the show is ending because this show has meant the world to me. I've been watching it for about six years now. I'm 17, so that's 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Since I've been watching it since I was about 11 or 12. So while that isn't a lot of as much time as some other people may have been watching it it's still like a good chunk of my lifetime you oh, know yeah. and it's now it's like this is like my last year of high school and it's like supernaturals ending oh, man. and then i'm you're gonna going, be going to college you're going, you're going so it's a like whammy. yeah so it's like not only did they <laughs> am i losing supernatural but i'm well, i'm not losing supernatural i i i'm i'm not gonna get supernatural how i've been getting it and how i'm used to getting it for so long mm -hmm. as i'm have as i'm going through like one of my biggest life changes oh, yeah. so that's gonna be stressful yeah, 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 but... you're, you're, yeah you're gonna go through a bit that's kind of yeah that is actually kind of crazy to think about that that you're going through a, a double a double little thing right there oh yeah it, so it, like like what like uh like sam uh what like uh shepherd said there's always be reruns yeah of course i'm gonna be watching supernatural from season one to 15 like probably till the day i die well so. i'm, I'm, I'm eventually, <laughs> hopefully before i die i'll be able to finally reach up to season 10 because that's <laughs> my my retro reviews i'm almost at the end of season one and it only took me almost three years so <laughs> so hopefully, i yeah. <laughs> binge watching supernatural is fun <laughs> so, yeah no it is pretty fun i mean oh. yeah i I, that just came to my head because I, I one time uh, watched 13 seasons of Supernatural in eight days. It was... How? Yeah. Um, I slept for three hours for that entire week, and I did not leave my house yeah, I, I, at all. No, I would have slept through about a, a good two or three seasons. <laughs> I, I'm, admittedly, I'm actually really curious to come back to season... to season seven to... Mm -hmm. to 10 because i barely remember shit from any of them particularly eight nine and ten i i really actually no i remember a little bit of 10 but i remember jack shit from eight and nine 
Eight is my favorite I, I, season. Is that the one so where Castiel I... almost kills Dean? Which time? Well, <laughs> when he's beating him, like, because he's being controlled by, what's her name? Naomi. Yeah, Naomi. Yeah, that's, that's uh, season eight. I think that's episode... That's the eight. only episode I remember. That's it. Are you, I don't wow. remember any other episode. Oh, I remember an episode I... where, where Castiel as a human was, like, traveling from different places. There was, like, cuts of him, like, in different bus stops. Oh, I know exactly what episode you're talking about, because I think that's my favorite episode. Uh, when he's going from restaurant to restaurant. Yeah. Oh. That's season eight, episode 21. Ep- yeah. Season eight? The Great Escapist. Yep. Wow. So, okay, I only remember two things for that entire season. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it'll be it'll be fun to see. Oh. You know, I ho- I would love to be in the position to rewatch season eight for the first time. So, like, I know you're not rewatching it for the first time, but like, it feel oh yeah, it, no, so, it like, feel like it. So enjoy it. It'll be nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, Jay, thank you for this review. I uh, really appreciated that. Um, well, definitely, no we probably should do another one for uh, the mid season, both uh, the mid season finale and the mid season return, and obviously yeah, the finale. So, yeah, we'll do, like, some back and forth if you want to do that. Yeah, of course. All right. Well, anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video here. I hope you enjoyed our conversation. I always enjoy talking to Jade here about Supernatural because we always can have really cohesive, respectful, and uh, enjoyable conversations about the show, despite the fact that we have different opinions of it, which is always nice to have. And I wish that other Supernatural fans would have that. I'm it. I'm, I'm I'm a bit of a... I can be a little bit narcissistic with some of my comments, but I always enjoy having like a respectful and open and nice, just a general nice conversation. So thank you again, Jay. Thank you for that. And thank you for not, uh, yeah, thank you for doing that too. <laughs> no problem. All right, guys. Well, All we'll right. uh, obviously Supernatural is going to continue on. So season or episode two will be coming out. Maybe it might be coming out the day of this release. Well, it depends on how fast I edit this. So anyways. See y'all later. Thanks for enjoying watching the video. Make sure to check out Jade's channel because uh, she produces some awesome stuff. She just went to uh, a con in where was it? New Jersey. Jersey. And she yeah. spent more money than I. I is amazing. But she obviously got to see all the actors and everything because it's better no better time than now to see them all. I'm trying yeah. to find a way to pay for them in Vancouver or to see because it seems like I have to pay money to be able <laughs> to pay money to buy these tickets because the the website's so horrible like yeah. you, you need a guide needs you to need get a their literal shit guide to get through this shit mm-hmm. yeah it, t- it took me forever to figure out how to oh, buy the tickets i was on it for like 10 minutes yesterday and i was like i don't know i don't know what to do do you know the amount of stress it it, it was buying the last gold ticket and trying to navigate through that site? I, I can only imagine. I, it, I literally thought I wasn't going to get my ticket, but I did. Well, so. well that's good. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching the video, and uh, keep watching our channels for all supernatural business, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.